G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. In today's video, I thought it would be a good idea for me to try and scour the internet and have a look at updating you guys on all the injuries that have popped up over this offseason through all the respective AFL clubs. Now, there's been a few big injuries. There's been a few minor ones. Um, I've tried to collate all the most meaningful ones. There's going to be too many you know, little injuries around the place to possibly name them all. But I've done my research and found a few injury stories that are worth contemplating as we approach the 2024 season. I think all the players are back now. All the clubs have resumed like main training uh, after the Christmas break and we're probably about three or four weeks off. The preseason action kicking off uh, when clubs actually start playing each other. So obviously the preseason is an important time. We don't want to see injuries to key players, but it does seem like a few have popped up as they do every year. So we're going to go through them in this video. Before I get into it, if you could do me a favor, if you are enjoying this content, uh, if you could consider subscribing to the channel. Only about 40% of the people who've watched my videos over the last month have actually subscribed to the channel. So if this is the sort of thing you want to see more of and you like AFL content, I would appreciate it if you considered subscribing. All right, let's start going through the injuries. So uh, I've reported a few bits and pieces here and there over the last few weeks. So this is the first time I've tried to collate them all. Um, if you're not living under a rock, you probably already know about Bailey Smith and Callum Mills. So I'm not going to necessarily go through those again. Uh, we're going to talk about the ones that have really popped up more recently than that. So one of the biggest names here is Jacob Wietering, who is apparently... Um, sustained a pretty high degree calf strain, or it's described as a high grade calf strain, sorry, which is a, a bit of a bitch of an injury, to be honest with you. And I think we're still waiting for um, the injury to be reviewed, for scans to come through for them to review the extent of that damage. That being said, it's reported that Carlton are sort of uh, bracing for an extended period off for Jacob Wittering, which is unfortunate because when I look at Carlton, I do think that Jacob Wittering actually sort of might be one of the most difficult to replace players in their best 22 and, and this might only this might not even rule him out for round one we don't know the answer to that yet but I'm sure Blues fans will have their fingers crossed because Carlton have many stars in that side absolutely but Weedering as the main key back in that back line uh, that is probably the one player they couldn't really afford to lose early in the season but fingers crossed he's still there for round one which seems possible the other one is Collingwood star Josh Dacos the reigning best and fairest winner has apparently It's described as though he's got some discomfort. We don't know whether it's an ankle or a calf. It just says lower leg. And we know that he didn't partake in the yo-yo test. And that is all we know at this current stage. So there's no real reason to be alarmed there. I mean, as opposed to the Wietering one, that seems like it's a legitimate strain. It's just about waiting to see how bad it is. With Dacos here, it might just be a case, it could just have been a rolled ankle and they're being precautionary. As far as I can tell, I did also pick up that Braden Maynard, who had a shoulder surgery post-grand final, is unlikely to be back in Collingwood's preseason training until next month. So that is actually quite a significant amount of time out for Braden Maynard there, which I did not realize was happening. Now, in some pretty devastating news for a fringe player at Essendon, Jaden Hunter has apparently gone down in a marking contest in a really innocuous act, and it's been confirmed that he has uh, ruptured his ACL. The Bombers were doing match simulation drills, he's gone up for a mark, and... Um, um, they've already done the scans and confirmed it was an ACL, which is a huge blow to a player obviously trying to make a name for himself at AFL level. So obviously, Jaden Hunter, not necessarily in their best 22, but no one likes to see a confirmed ACL. Then we got a couple of players, big names in particular, from the Western Bulldogs. Well, the first one is Tim English. And we again, this one is just shrouded in vagueness, if you will. But he's been held back from contact training due to a medical condition. Again, that could be nothing. Uh, so we won't really need to speculate. They still expect him to be there for round one. So I'm not too sure how long he is going to be out from specific contact training. The other one, though, is Marcus Bontempelli, which I did not realize he actually had surgery on his ankle in November. Apparently, he was on a training camp in the US with teammates, and then they uh, did a scan and found minor bone spurs. The good news is for Dogs fans is that uh, when I found that article, it was written about a month ago, and they do expect him to be back at training post-Christmas break, which is where we are now. So I couldn't find whether Marcus Bontempelli trained this week. All we know is that he just missed a patch of the preseason right before Christmas, and presumably if he's back in full training now, it should be all sweet. But it is unfortunate from Bulldogs' situation here where you already got Bailey Smith. You really hope that the clouds around Bond and Pelly and Team English are just clouds because those are some of their absolute best players. I also found a few tidbits from the North Melbourne Footy Club. The first one is around Braden George, who I discovered recently had elbow surgery back in October. And uh, Braden George has obviously missed a lot of football. I think he did an 
ACL in his draft year, but is highly rated internally. Even pre-draft was highly rated and sort of slid down due to injury. North fans seem to love him, uh, but I discovered that he's unlikely to be ready for round one. So that is probably, maybe it's an AFL fantasy consideration. He hasn't debuted yet, but an interesting piece of info nonetheless. Aiden Core also sprained an ankle back in December and is on a modified program. Again, if he's on a modified program and he's done an ankle, that suggests to me it's not absolutely major because, you know, ankle injuries can get really bad. But with the state of North's back line, still an important player to make sure is fit. So hopefully that's all good. And Taron Thomas also had a minor procedure to help with groin, groin soreness, which I'm not exactly sure what that was, but he's expected to be running again around about now. So I don't know whether, again, he's trained with North Melbourne this week. But that is the update I have for you, that he did have a bit of uh, minor surgery around groin soreness, which, uh, yeah, it's difficult to imagine minor groin surgery. But anyway... A quick one here for the D's. Lockie Hunter apparently sustained a minor calf injury over the summer break and is somewhat expected to return pretty soon, so that one's not too major. The other one is Luke Ryan, who was playing in Fremantle's match simulation drills yesterday or something like that, and apparently rolled an ankle. Now, as far as I can tell, this just came from one or two tweets, but there's been absolutely no confirmation as to the severity of this injury. So hopefully for Fremantle's sake, this is just a case of a player rolling an ankle and he'll be back soon. It is possible they've sent it for scans. We haven't heard back yet. Yet, but I figured that no news is good news at this stage. Then I'll cover off a couple of other stories that have popped up over this offseason that I've already covered on this channel. One of them is Will Day, so if you missed it, he has a stress fracture in his foot, which does place him in doubt for round one, which is a massive shame, and one to consider, I guess, broadly for you know fantasy considerations, uh, but also from a Hawthorne perspective, he won their best and fairest, so one player that they certainly want to get fit as soon as possible. And I mentioned it yesterday in my Harley Reid video that Kobe Burgeal and Liam Ryan have both picked up hamstring injuries to different extents. It sounds like Kobe Burgeal, it was a bit of tightness, and Liam Ryan has an actual strain that will require surgery. That really sucks. That is actually news that I've found out since I made that video yesterday that he will require surgery, but hopefully they're expecting him probably in the first few rounds of the season, but it does sound like round one might be unrealistic. So those are all the tidbits I got for you guys. Again, I don't want to alarm anyone. I'm just trying to report what's being said out there. Some of these are minor. Some of these might be more serious. And hopefully we don't see too many more because injuries in the AFL suck. I've tried to be as comprehensive as I could. There's a lot of uh, information out there and I tried to go back, you know, a little bit in time and some of this stuff isn't even reported. But if there's anything I've missed, let me know in the comment section and let other viewers know as well so they can go look at the comment section, see what other injuries you're aware of and uh, this will all give us a good idea because it does help, you know, making ladder predictions, making your fantasy team and it's all information that everyone's invested in because we don't want our team to have injuries. But anyway, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.